without ceremony Monster Hearts 2 system and is entirely improvised outside of backstory prepared for the start of the game. This game will contain description of violence, blood, sexual themes, alcohol, and gambling. Viewer discretion is advised. And we are live. There was a bit of a pause there. Like, I was why, looking why? at the wrong thingy to see the seconds go by. I was looking at live instead of rack. And I was like, wait, it didn't start? And it was already like five seconds in. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, dang. The tension for the yeah, it's the tension. Yeah. <laughs> it was on purpose, I believe. OK, so welcome back. We've already made it to session six. That's crazy. Last time on Wasteland Gospel, we had a bit of a relaxed, as far as you can call it, relaxed session where we recovered from some of the night before where some crazy antics happened. <laughs> Morgan was airlifted out of the fray by Micah and Haley, taken back to the room to patch up and make sure that she actually got some sleep and recovered some harm. And the same thing happened with Nox and Tal. Dante ended up chasing after Ash in the dead of night, but was unsuccessful in even reaching her by talking. The two did not end up having a confrontation. And Ash stayed in Vera's shop overnight, sleeping with the lizards <laughs> to keep herself safe and protected. Dante afterwards ended up at the church and slept in the pews all night before deciding to return to the altar. Uh, the next day, everyone had some sort of questions of faith that they had to consider. Tal and Taya were preparing to go for a walk, but not before Knox and Taya had a modest confrontation where Knox had a lot of questions again about their purpose within the choir and what Taya really wants from them in the end. And in addition to that, Ash was able to make it back to the altar and on their way back came face to face with their <laughs> assailant, their pursuer. I'm, I'm not sure what. <laughs> their old flame. <laughs> and ended up in a kind of precarious emotional situation where the two had a conflict, but ultimately, again, did not engage. And finally, the session kind of closed out with both a humorous little driving instruction between Dante and Cam and Knox reuniting with Haley after the events of the night before, where Haley actually offered Knox to go with them on their quest and leave the choir's safety at Javelin for the time being. So I want to rejoin with Morgan. Morgan, you were in Haley's room with Micah recovering and your arm is really aching uh, and you're still feeling kind of dizzy. You tried to get up earlier and you just collapsed on the crowd. <laughs> so how are you feeling right now? What do you sort of want to do in this moment? I don't know. I think Morgan is feeling super great, um, <laughs> but I don't know. I think she would want to talk to Haley about getting back at the choir. Mm. So the night before, not only did you get attacked by Cam, but you also got attacked by Quinn with the oh, rifle. Yeah. And you're... <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. The... <laughs> so how do you feel like when you're thinking about everything that's happened, do you want to talk to Mike about any of it? Or have you sort of relied on yourself to keep this private? I think Morgan would keep this private. Okay, can you make a dark roll for me? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I rolled a nine. Amazing. Morgan... Do you want to inspect your wound at all? Yes. Okay. Is, is it like bandaged and stuff or do I have to peel back? Like <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's covered in bandages. Uh, Micah actually took care of it for you. Micah, you're also still in the room and you would see Morgan doing this. Do you decide to sort of unravel the bandages? Yes. As you 
slowly begin to peel the bandages off your skin. The closer you get down, you begin to feel them get a little bit sticky. They're a little bit wet. And when you reach your actual flesh, there are no puncture wounds anymore. But there are small scars where the bite marks were that have this sort of black coating around them. This sort of dark looking, purpley bruised, black looking marks. And do you want to maybe look at them a little closer? Yes, I would. (laughs) (laughs) As you begin to look at them, the room around you gets dark. Uh, Micah can no longer enter your vision. The entire space gets filled with clouds. And you find yourself in a relatively familiar setting. It's a dark, concrete basement, very little light, a few shafts coming from an incredibly high ceiling. And you hear moaning and the staticky crumble coming from the next room. Do you want to investigate? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> moaning. <laughs> Groaning is probably oh, more accurate. <laughs> moaning. Girl. <laughs> so you begin your approach and you realize that the sounds sound a bit more like snarling the closer that you get and you can hear this sort of click snapping sound every couple seconds as though film shutters are going off on a camera and photos are being taken Uh, you begin to see the light filter out of a specific archway but you're not close enough do you want to see yes i'll take a peek as you round the corner, you begin to see there's this large, almost gaping reflection of the ceiling in the ground. Looks like a pool of mercury and this black, sticky liquid just coming out of this little pool. And as the liquid emerges, it begins to take physical form and then shrivels again and spills back into the mercury. And you hear this violent, rabid dog sound like something is emerging. You think for a moment you might see ears and then the snapping jaws of a Doberman, but you can't really tell. And then when there seems to be a moment where the liquid is calming, you can see two glowing eyes snap towards you and you make direct eye contact. What do you do? Morgan's going to try punching it. Um. (laughs) No. No. Oh, Riley, I know you're here. (laughs) Give us a sign. (laughs) Okay, so um, you're not close enough to touch this creature. You're probably like, at least eight feet away. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, in that case, yeah, Morgan's gonna, like, storm up to it. Um, okay, so you're possible. going to run up to the creature and try yeah. and engage it? Yeah. Like a strange sound, this action will have consequences. <laughs> so what exactly do you want to do? Um, I think she would run forward and try and grab it. Okay. You reach your hand forward, and instead of making contact with anything physical, your hand just goes straight into this dark mass of whatever it is. It doesn't really feel liquid or solid. It's like an aqueous form, but the head continues to move towards you, not connected to any kind of spine or bones, and out from the sticky black comes teeth, and the jaw begins to open. Your hand is stuck. What do you want to do? Ooh, um, which hand is it? You didn't specify. Oh, poop. Ooh, I'll leave it up to you. Which is it the one that got bit or is it her cursed hand? I'm going to say it's the one that got bit. Mm, okay. I guess you'll try and pull free. Okay. As you pull free, your hand does release from the slime and it kind of 
slips out slowly. There's that kind of sludgy, slimy feeling across. And it has now the puncture marks again. They've gotten even darker. They've extended to where your wrist is. And your entire arm looks like this big infection. And as this creature looks at you, you can hear Cam's voice in your head. And it's just laughter. Is there anything else you want to do? Do you want to look around the room, maybe? So, yeah, okay, wait, so the blob is, like, still in front of her? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Okay, okay. Before looking around the room, Morgan's gonna try, like, activating her cursed arm. And what do you want to do with that? I think just hold it up, like, Eleven style, like, hold it up (laughs) against the blob and see if anything happens. Oh. (laughs) Um, As you move your hand towards this, when you touch the blob, when you touch your hand to the undulating form, you feel skin. And the sort of shoulder of a human peels out. You get the sense that when you touch your hand to something its true nature can be revealed in some way. You can't understand why. But as you do this, the glow of your hand turns a bit purple. And I'm going to actually have you write down that at this point now, you have a psychic connection with Cam. So Cam will know what you're doing. (laughs) Oh, if wait. Cam makes dark rolls, <gasps> and you will know what Cam is doing if you make dark rolls. Oh my uh, god. Ooh. Okay, okay. And then, it, can I still look around the room? No, I'm gonna say you missed that chance. The okay, room fair. begins to <laughs> dissolve away, and as it does, Micah, when you look at Morgan, Morgan has both hands outstretched. And you can see the scarring of Cam's bite on Morgan's arm. And it's now much, much darker because, Morgan, of what you did. Micah, what do you want to say? I first want to ask if Micah have any knowledge about this. Or is there anything that they might connect to the way that Morgan's arms are looking? I think you might be able to recognize the pattern that's appearing on Morgan's arm. You feel like you've seen it before. But I'm going to say that you don't know anything unless you make a dark roll. It just looks like Morgan has had some kind of vision. You don't understand why. Okay, well, I do want to make that dark roll first before I say anything in that case, if it's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Ew, 11. All right, and what did you want to ask? What exactly is happening with Morgan's arm right now? What's, like, infesting it? As you ask the abyss what is happening to Morgan's arm, you can feel ghostly hands come around the side of your face, gently against your ears, and you can tell that they're cold. They remind you of a feeling that you've had before as you've been living in town, communing with the spirits and doing exactly what you do as you've been here. And you recognize that this is, there's no delicate way to put it, but this is a type of magic that you've grown particularly familiar with. And you know, it's not from this plane. Whatever happened between Cam and Morgan is beginning to have genuine consequences on the structure of Morgan's body. Fun. Okay, that is so cool. Um, All right, Micah's going to try and uh, keep it relatively up to how Morgan's doing and uh, approach her and go, hey, are you okay? What the fuck's going on with your arm? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling great. I don't know, I think that Dumbass dog gave me fucking rabies or some shit. Yeah, it looks gnarly. Um, you're not in any pain or anything? Do you feel your arm? Can you move it? Um, can I move it? 
Yeah, when you try to engage your fingers, it does feel like your blood is a little viscous, but you can move it. Hmm. Alternate question. Morgan is going to try poking the little dark spots. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> With your cursed hand. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only other hand. <laughs> okay. When you reach your cursed hand over your wound, you hover it, you begin to see that the flesh is very different almost like an illusion is covering it uh, or mending it. It's kind of unclear, but you see that there's a lot more blood that's around your arm. And you think you might want to wrap it up again. Hmm. Morgan's going to look at Micah and say, you ever seen something like this? Don't say I can, really. Try not to poke at it, maybe. Um, yeah, I figured this... that part. <laughs> <sighs> This doesn't look that good, Morgan. Uh, I think it'll be fine. Do you know that, Do you want... that person from the choir? The one with the dog? Uh, yeah, I've seen them around before. Do you happen to know anything about them and that dog? Well, I never thought that that dog was that murderous and violent. Uh, always seemed like a nice puppy to me, but... You oh, know Jesus. how... <laughs> you know how images can differ. Do you want me to wrap that up again? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good, I think. Whatever okay. that dog did, there's something fucking weird about it. Yeah. And Micah's definitely gonna look into this when they have time, like, when they have time to kind of find out information. <laughs> yes, perfect. Okay, so the two of you have a moment where you're able to take care of that and you hear a knock on the door and muffled sounds coming from behind it. Do you want to get it? Yes. Okay. Haley comes through the door uh, with her arms <laughs> laden with supplies. <laughs> kind of just dumps them out all over the bed and then puts her arms against her hips uh, and then looks between the two of you confusedly and like, did I miss something? Uh... No. <laughs> she raises her eyebrows and looks at Micah. No, I was just gonna um, patch up Morgan again, you know, change the bandages. Uh, it's looking a bit disgusting, so nobody has to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it didn't look too good last night either. Can't imagine it's much better now. Well, we got everything we need to get the fuck out of here. I'm um, thinking of heading back to the ranch and then maybe we can try to find <laughs> where our bridal is. I think I made some progress the other day, so if you guys are up for it. Of course. Did you manage to find anything about the whereabouts of Ash? Mm, no, but I mean, if you want to maybe head into the central area a little bit discreet like I'm sure we could maybe maybe we could see her um I'm not really sure where I she can, went I can go with him look for her yeah yeah are you sure you want to leave right now after what happened oh last yeah night? I mean I, I'm, I don't know I'm if feeling, you know there's I'm feeling great <laughs> Like he's gonna roll their eyes <laughs> in a playful manner, like Morgan, classic. Um. <laughs> Haley's gonna like affectionately shove Morgan's cursed arm, like, yeah, kid, you're fun. Well, you'll you'll be right as rain in no time, right? Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm gonna load all of this stuff into my packs, and then I'll take him out to deputy in chief, and I'll meet you guys out there. How does that sound? Sounds good. Do you need anything else from me, either of you? Um, no, I think I'm good. Yeah, right. no, just, just look out, all right? I'm a bit cautious and worried. Hmm. Well, between you and me, we might have an interloper on our little trip with us, but... What do you mean? 
<laughs> I can't be sure yet, but you remember how I told you about having a coin in your pocket? Yeah. <laughs> I think we might be taking him with us. Him? Mm-hmm. You mean... one of... the choir? I got a long plan. I think this is gonna be really good for us. And you, you think you can trust them? <laughs> I mean, all that really matters is that he trusts me, don't you think? I mean, I guess, but... What if it's a plan with tea? Like... Double dealing, dipping your hands in both pie kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, what if he comes with us and then next thing you know, whole choir's on our asses? Hmm. I mean, don't you think they kind of already are? <laughs> we haven't exactly been quiet. Well, yeah, but... But do you really think giving up the location of the ranch is a good idea? I don't think we'll be there much longer. So... What? <laughs> I'll tell you all about it when we're back, I promise. All high-level information. I swear that it'll all be okay. I just want you guys to have some faith in me. I'm not gonna let anything bad happen to us. Um, Miss God, I have a question. Yes, you me. <laughs> um, would Morgan have her stuff with her, like, in that room? Stuff like, let's say, a hoodie? You're in Haley's room. So yeah. if you took it back to your room because you stole it, then uh -huh. no, you wouldn't have right. it. <laughs> <laughs> but, Micah, you would smell the same smell that you had in the bathroom that Haley smells like right now. <laughs> okay, um, pardon me, but, I, but, but I'm gonna use this to make it extra spicy. Um, yes. Micah catches a whiff of... Uh, the same smell they smelled earlier in the bathroom, and is actually gonna walk up to Haley, lean in beside her head, closer to her hair, and is gonna take a few. I don't want to say sniffs, but I don't know any other words. Um, <laughs> and go. <laughs> well, your coin and you seem awfully close, Haley. Is that his cologne that I smelled in the bathroom earlier too? I'm a very smart woman, Micah. Don't underestimate me. Oh, I know. Me. Oh, I know, Haley. Don't worry. I'm just wondering how caught up you are personally in mm -hmm. this whole plan. Haley gets kind of not angry, but you can tell that she's masking a real irritation. And she looks Micah up and down kind of chews her cheek and says this whole plan personally affects me personally affects all of us and I do plan to make it as close to the chest as I possibly can Mike is gonna step back and give Haley space and go in a more relaxed manner they're gonna say all right just don't want to see you get hurt. That's <laughs> what we look out for each other, right? All kind of hurt. <laughs> so her face cracks open and she smiles again, but you can't really tell if it's genuine. Something about her just seems off sometimes, but you take it as this is what Haley's like. And she gives you a wry little wink and then goes back to packing her stuff, says, I mean, I don't know, he might flake out on me, it's, it's entirely possible, but I think that when you look an opportunity in the face, you kind of have to snatch it while it's there, you know what I mean? Alright, Hales, then it's all good. Alright, well I'll see you two sunshines outside, I guess. Go find Ash for me. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, actually say that in character, but... <laughs> Morgan was just like, Woo boy! <laughs> uh, okay, so the two of you want to head down to the central part of the altar. Yeah. Alright. Ash, you had just made it inside from your brief 
confrontation with Tal outside the hotel. Where exactly were you heading? Did you have a plan in mind? I think as soon as they go through the doors, they have like a moment of confusion because it doesn't look at all how like they left last night. There is no signs of fight or blood on the floor, right? Yeah, the hotel actually looks even newer than it did before. It has an almost gothic look to it where things have been restored. The walls and floors are shining and polished. The fountain has been updated. It looks beautiful, but also, yeah, it's extremely confusing. I think that takes them back and they get a chill down their spine, remembering the, how they felt like when they were talking to Chrissy, they felt a tremble on the floor, right? So mm -hmm. they remember that as well. Did they notice anything else? Is there anyone around on the lounge? Or they, there... does she see Chrissy on the reception? For once, Chrissy is standing behind the reception desk. It's been updated and remodeled and is much bigger. And once again, she's holding a newspaper across her face, so you can only really see her manicured nails holding the paper. And when you look over at the bar, there seem to be a lot of people that you've never really seen before at the altar. Many of them have long, shiny black hair that crosses past their waists. And a lot of them have a sort of pallor to their skin that's a little bit confusing. The entire room is filled, though, and the lounge is looking a little bit more populated as well. I think as just takes a moment at the confusion, and they make their way towards Chrissy again. Chrissy doesn't really move uh, with the newspaper. She might turn a page, but she doesn't say anything. This time, Ash doesn't really try to make small talk. She just says, I've got something we could trade. The newspaper flicks down immediately, and Chrissy looks really refreshed. Eyes are really bright and awake, and smiles, but doesn't say anything. I saw who did the little mess on the altar last night, and I could tell you more about it if you offer me some information as well. Chrissy smiles with her teeth, and you can see sharp canines poke out. Almost seems like she doesn't even care about hiding what is going on with her. Uh, and she looks towards her office door and then back at you to see how quiet this might be. Mm. As Ash is, is like her moving her eyes, I think Ash just starts heading towards that direction. Chrissy reaches into her pocket and pulls out a massive ring of keys, finds one with a sort of ornate looking head to it, and then turns it into the lock and lets you inside. What does Ash see when she goes inside? <laughs> Ash sees a room that is extremely dark. There's a large staircase somehow in a very high ceilinged area with a bed with multiple bedposts and elaborate luxurious curtains that hang down around it. There are large filing cabinets everywhere, this beautiful big rug, and then a chandelier in the center of the room. Chrissy has obviously had a lot of fun with <laughs> designing this space. And you do notice that in a far corner there's a section of couches and there looks to be a person passed out on one of the couches but it's really dark and they're probably sleeping oh no recognition at all no characteristics that could be recognizable in the person no they just look like a person like maybe a medium-sized person with long pants with a hat draped over their head and arms crossed over their body Ash just raises an eyebrow, looks at Chrissy and motions her head like, that's not going to be a problem. <laughs> I love Ash. <laughs> uh, Chrissy walks Ash over to her desk. She sits down on the opposite side and uses her foot with her cowboy boot to kick out the chair on the other side of the desk for Ash to sit down. Ash just moves over, sits. She doesn't seem like 
too comfortable. She looks a bit rigid. Does Chrissy say anything else? Chrissy reaches into her uh, little vestibule office and pulls a drawer, takes out a tiny little box of cigarettes, puts one in her mouth, and then offers the other one to Ash to see if she'll take one. It's just regular cigarettes? Or something yeah. else? <laughs> yeah, it's just a plain cigarette. <laughs> uh, I, I think I should move us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She uh. crosses her legs over and then kind of looks at you expectantly, like, all right. You know the person I was asking about yesterday? Apparently they had someone else in mind and they came here and caused a little ruckus no you don't say and what? um what did the ruckus look like exactly i mean it was quite loud i'm not sure if you could hear but she was literally branding a rifle <laughs> so mm. i have heard that she did cause quite a bit of trouble <laughs> Did you say you know why? Who was she looking for? They were looking for the one with the ombre. They, I'm not sure. They just seem to have something. You, Some conflict, I think. You don't have a name, by chance? What about I ask my question and we'll see if it's of equal value. Oh, so you do have a name? But you want to bargain, I like it. Okay, what's your question? I want Ash, Ash to describe exactly the place that she saw in her vision. And then ask Chrissy if she knows where that is. Okay, do you want to provide like a little refresher or do you want to just skip to the part where Ash has just told Chrissy about all of it and wants to know? I mean, if you could remind me a little bit as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Um, so Ash perhaps describes that there's this sort of interesting looking clearing with a long lake that stretches out like a jaw opening. And there were these graves leading just right up to the mouth of this lake. And that it seemed familiar, almost dreamlike, and if there was anything that would potentially resemble that place where there's a sort of wooded forest around it. And Chrissy kind of, <laughs> she smokes her cigarette and she smiles really big at you again with those big sharp teeth and shakes her head a little bit. She's like, why, why do you ask me such interesting questions? Where are you from? Well, I'm not from around here. I can tell you that much. And I particularly would like to leave as soon as I can. Mm. So I think the less we know, the better. All right. So you want to leave? But you want to know about this place. You would never be looking for something, would you? That would require a lot more from you. <laughs> oh, I like you so much. Okay, the place you're looking for is Thistle Lake. I'm sure you've probably, if you were around here for longer, you might have summered there or something like that. It's cooler by the lake. Not sure where the graves are exactly, but we haven't got anything else close enough by that would be similar to that. Well, I'm sure mm. if you walked around the edge perimeter of the lake, you'd eventually find something. Now, what's the you name want... of the lovely person that you neglected to share? Maybe I can offer something better than a name. Oh, better than a name. Oh, do tell. So, that person was branding a little mark that I think it's very conflicting with the rules of your place. Queen had the little choir's chain branded on her fist and she came here not really following anything that they're supposed to. Now, 
I can see why you'd think that would be very fresh. And if you'd told me maybe a year ago, I would have really liked that. But I'm much more interested in the name of who Quinn was after. And she just thinks for a moment. She did get her information. And she just says, her name is Rogers. Ah. Oh, I even know her room number. That's such good news. Well, thank you. I'll keep an eye out. And I hope you find what you're looking for at the lake. And I hope neither you or I come in any more trouble at this lovely establishment. I've had a, a real go of things trying to fix it up. Do you like what I've done with the place? Ash raises her eyebrow again. Like, that was quite quick. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know what kind of service you're getting here. <laughs> Nothing for free, my love. But if you ever have more information, I'd love to tell you about it. He's making business with you. <laughs> she just gets up, looks over again at the person that's laying. Did they move at all? Did they see like... Not an inch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... um this is Leslie, but I'm assuming that Chrissy was drinking this person's blood and this person's like <laughs> there laying down. <laughs> I mean, like, you can always roll the dice and check, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ash gets up and leaves the room. Okay. And Morgan and Micah, were you heading into the foyer? Yes. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> it's not looking good. <laughs> Ash, you leave Chrissy's office. Chrissy stays in the office behind you. Close the door behind your back, and you do see Micah and Morgan. They're close by. Do you go over and, and reunite with them? Mm. Ash takes uh once over at Morgan <laughs> because. They were not looking good the last time. <laughs> they mostly are relieved when they see Morgan standing and like walking around still and just make their way towards them. Okay, well, the three of you are able to reconvene and as you all get back together in a group, I'm going to switch over to some of the choir members. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Tal, how are you feeling after letting Ash go? I think there's this, like, an inkling of shame, but at the same time, I think Tal feels like, in their head, it was strategically sound, considering everything that happened the night before. It probably wouldn't be the best place to do something out of pocket or causing a scene in front of the place so yeah inkling of shame but is nonetheless this kind of like i think there will be a better chance presented to kind of see what can happen next Cal's kind of lost at the moment to be honest okay the sky is looking a little bit friendlier today and after dante had driven away Taya, who had been standing further down on the steps of the altar, doesn't really look back to you, but begins to walk around the side of the hotel towards the canyon. Do you want to follow them? Yes. They're just going to follow Taya. Kind of like observe how the desert is looking after the storm. Yeah. Mm. Well, there is a bit of debris around some of the brush. The scrub brush has been uprooted and there are a couple desert hairs kind of bouncing around mm. eating some of the the little <laughs> things that have been knocked free oh. and Taya makes it to this vista that overlooks almost the deepest part of the canyon and uh, leans over a little stone overlook and still doesn't really say anything do you want to go join them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tal is going to take a deep breath in and then um is there like a railing or is this just like empty space it's kind of like a half stone wall that probably reaches like about mid chest 
so you can lean over it and see everything in the canyon. Yeah, Tal is going to take a uh, deep inhale of the morning air next to Taya and just look down into the canyon um, kind of mindlessly. Is there anything like notable about anything in there? Or Do you want to make a dark roll for me? Sure, yeah, I'll make a dark roll. Um, right. My stat did go up, so now I'm just at like a plain zero. Um, Hell yeah. Okay. Nine. Oh, nine. One of you gonna get unlucky real fast. A nine is a mixed success. So what happens when you look over into the canyon, you can almost see these little tiny embers floating up from the darkness in the canyon. Just little bits of ash as well mixed in with the smoke. But it's almost imperceptible. And you think if you really focus, you can hear this quiet wailing and the sound of splintering wood under the pressure of fire rising through a building. Almost like something has been set ablaze beneath you, but you know that there's nothing down there. So it's this eerie sensation of something that's lost, but also was never really there. And it kind of unsettles you. Do you want to say anything? Um, this kind of makes Hal uncomfortable. Um, almost instinctively thinks like, oh god, did I do something? Seeing the embers and then kind of realizing like, they kind of fade out, right? Nothing was really there. Yeah, like they dissipate slowly and you realize that it's just the empty air in the canyon. Maybe a circling hawk. I think in the moment of the fear, also considering like, Tal didn't know what happened last night. Tal just says without even thinking, I didn't, I didn't set anything on fire, did I? Taya looks over at Tal with a sort of gentle expression that Tal knows. It's really trying to reassure them and let her know, no, you didn't do anything wrong. Tal takes another breath in and then stiffens their spine up, kind of straightening it a bit. And then says, kind of in relief, okay, good. And then is kind of lost in thought again, just looking at Taya. Um, in that soft moment, kind of <laughs> asks them to, were you the one that put the tea at my table? Taya breathes out through their nose and then looks out at the canyon and smokes their cigarettes some more, kind of in confirmation. But again, is a little bit too... They seem almost shy, but mm. they, they don't really say anything. I think Tal just smiles to themselves and then kind of looks out to the vista again, taking that as like, a, all right, I get it. And then appreciates like how nice the morning is, but also just how much of the night was lost and then asks Taya um, was there something you wanted to talk about? Taya stubs out the cigarette on the rock wall and turns around to face the altar and folds their arms across their chest uh, sort of with hands clasped in the center and then as they're looking up and kind of inspecting the way that the sunrise is coloring the sky say very quietly I need to know why, and then doesn't say anything else. Why I let Ash go? And they kind of nod. Tal is calculating their next words very carefully. <laughs> but ultimately, I think, decides to be honest and says, I know I, I try not to mess up too often you know um this matters to me kind of like this whole general like altar tea choir thing but i think i've just been dealing with a lot of turbulent emotions and i'm trying to not let that get in the way of what we need to do you know what i need to do for you and i apologize and <sighs> I know it's not really answering your question at all, I suppose. It was just considering what happened last night might have not been the smartest thing to do in front of the doors of the altar, along with everything else, of course. And 
their tone starts getting a little bit lower, you know, she's like, kind, of, kind of feeling ashamed of it, um, <laughs> and just stops, just waits. Taya says anything. <laughs> Taya is absorbing everything that Tao is saying, and as they stand and listen, their head falls to the ground, and then they say, when I trust you with something like this, I don't like to interfere because I know that you have a plan and I want to respect your plan. But if I don't know your plan anymore, I can't see it. It gets harder for me to let you do it on your own. I hope you can understand that. Tao's mouth parts a bit and then purses it again. And before speaking, kind of like readies himself and says, I understand that it's um, just becoming an increasingly complicated situation. I think Ash is involved with this other group that I had no idea they were involved in. And a couple months back, why I feel like I'm so... <sighs> lost on this is because I wanted you to meet them and they got like a spirit about them and you know we hung out I really liked them and stuff and I thought maybe you'd like them too kind yeah. of insinuating like to Taya because Tal is a recruiter meant like Tal after spending some time with Ash had wanted to actually take to the choir like to meet Taya perhaps um but anyway going back in <laughs> and what I told you they just I felt stupid you know them taking the documents and stuff I just felt like oh god I uh, had a weak moment or something and I was fooled but at the same time like Tal is trying to collect their thoughts into something more linear um I don't know what this group is exactly but I'm not sure if she's exactly with them either and I don't know if it was just an accident or if this was something they meant to do, you know, meaning like taking the documents, uh, aforementioned documents, not the ones from the night before, but other documents. (laughs) (laughs) Um, From what I learned about Ash before all of this happened is they were never from here. I don't think they were involved with anything else, which is why I'm so confused. Um, But my plan, if I could just not even get the documents themselves, but just the contents of it, whatever it was, I know it was important to you. I apologize that I didn't keep them much more safe. I just, I don't want to hurt them. And then Tal closed their eyes shut really quick and then (laughs) is <laughs> feeling a little silly like oh god i'm second in command i can't even grab this person and get what i need and then kind of goes quiet <laughs> again <laughs> Taya again just sort of patiently waits for tal to finish everything that they want to say and then looks over at them doesn't look at their eyes necessarily but keeps bouncing eyes between their clavicle their nose their shoulders unsure of how to preface what they're about to say and then they say I've struggled a lot with what I've had to do what I've had to pick up and take care of because when I took over I didn't ask I didn't get promoted I didn't even want to be here and I found purpose through our mission and sometimes some people don't want to be a part of that and there were a lot of people that i really cared about who didn't want to be a part of that who left everything who left me and it has been a a long part of my life trying to move on from that and not try to get so attached to someone that if they left me I'd be broken and then they kind of take one second to look Tal in the eyes and then they kind of look down again 
You have to do what you have to do. You're the only person that I've trusted to make these kinds of decisions. And you'll decide whatever you think is best for us, and I know you will. But this person doesn't really seem like someone who wants the kind of structure that we offer. And from what I understand of them, <laughs> she at least seems a little bit scared of who we are. So unless you're willing to change, I don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, Tal is just soaking all of this in, like with great respect that Taya had said something pretty vulnerable and says, I think I just want to get this accomplished, get this done. And I almost don't want to involve Ash in it anymore. I think I gave up on that the day I kind of opens and closes, remembering um, like the day I burned them, you know, um, they can just do whatever they want, I suppose. But I guess I wanted to explain myself that I didn't mean to do what I had done. I just had trust in them. I understand when people betray that trust or seemingly betray that trust or whatever. Um, I guess maybe I didn't, I don't know, open up enough, but I wanted to protect us, you know, our family. Is Tal wearing a hat? Yeah, they're wearing a hat, yeah. Is their forehead exposed or does the hat create a barrier around their head? When Tal is talking to Taya and they're wearing a hat, usually they try to keep it clear of like their sight so they can look at them. I think that Taya in this moment will sort of walk towards Tal and say very calmly, so you don't want to recruit her to the choir. You want her to forgive you. Tao's mouth purses up tighter and says, yeah, um, maybe I do. Taya takes their left hand and clasps it behind Tal's neck in a sort of gesture of like camaraderie and then puts their forehead uh, against Tal's, closes their eyes and gives like an exhale and then uh, moves their hand away and steps back and says, I think I understand. Tal's eyes at that gesture widen like to the point where you can see like the sunrise almost making their eyes glimmer. <sighs> and ultimately it's like a sigh of like relief that Taya understands, even though it might have not been the best explained. And then looks Taya straight in the eye and says, you always do understand. Kind of, you always do understand me after all this time and stuff and gives them like a wide smile with their mouth closed, not exactly showing teeth. Um, mm. And then says, thank you. And then says like, I understand you've done so much we've all done so much and i know this is just really important to us and everything you know but i'll always try to find a way to make it happen kind of lets their eyes close again and then keeps the smile on their mouth and kind of nods well you catch more flies with honey so i understand unfortunately we still have the situation of the mole and as much as i'm fine with letting you handle this interpersonal situation on your own. I need to know who you think it is so I can take care of it. Tal goes back to the root of the question, like, why did you let Ash go? And then recalls the front of the altar, just thinking about everything and then recalls, like, hasn't seen Nox, but then has seen Dante today. And then realizes he just kind of drove away. And then their mouth is hanging open a bit and then says, Something happened last night where I feel like Tal instinctively puts their like hand on their forehead again. I don't have anything concrete and part of the night is gone, but how did I get to my room? Knox took you upstairs. What did Dante do? What was Dante up to? Dante went after your problem. What? 
Obviously. Tal has this look of momentary, like, conflict, but also curiosity. And then let's Taya continue. And they didn't come back with her, very clearly. But they did go. As far as I understand, there was a situation where somebody tried to stop them. But they did try. I don't think we're getting the whole picture. What concerns me is that Dante also didn't do anything in front of the altar just now. I mean, so did I. I didn't do anything. And then kind of like sighs out. Um, I know Taya is expecting like a solid answer. And then says, I tried talking to Knox yesterday, but all this stuff started happening with the shooter. Which, by the way, do you know anything about that? Yeah. Who was that? That's Quinn. Quinn. Miss God. Does Tal know about Quinn? <laughs> You've maybe heard about Quinn, but... Okay. Uh, not too much. Okay. Were they, like, actively trying to do something? Quinn is doing something for me. Uh, I see. I don't really approve of their methods, but there's not much else I can ask for. And then again, in a very tall fashion, just wants to be honest with Taya and says, uh, I don't have a concrete answer for you yet right now, but I do want to talk to Knox maybe about what happened last night, just so I can get a better idea of what could be going on. And I could come right back if I glean anything valuable. Taya cracks their neck, sighs outward in confirmation, and then turns to begin to walk back to the altar it doesn't seem like they're disappointed. It just seems like they know that this will take longer than they were hoping it would. Mm -hmm. And so they're struggling a little bit with loose threads. They don't really like loose threads. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to say to them before they go away? This is a bit of an open conversation between the two of you. I think we're okay for now. I think Tal just lets the conversation lull and like follows them back to the altar. Awesome. So, um, returning with Dante, you had been kind of teaching Cam how to drive. Cam was begrudgingly going along with it. She doesn't really know how to drive, and she's also like, why is this happening? <laughs> but she was doing a pretty good job. She actually, when she was rolling to see if she was doing well, she did pretty well. So, you've been in the passenger seat for a while now, teaching her basic stuff. What exactly do you want to do now? I guess after they do like the basics and I think Cam knows to drive just enough for Dante to have a little peace of mind. So they just kind of say to themselves, this should be good enough. And then there's a moment of silence before they continue. And Dante says, you were right about me. No one would miss me if I disappeared, but... I'm not sure the same thing would apply to you, though. And they don't look at Cam before they continue. Taya is losing patience with me, and I fail to retrieve the documents. So, in other words, I'm fucked, but it doesn't have to be the same for you. Dante opens the glove compartment and reaches in, and they pull out what seems to be like a tiny parcel wrapped in um, leathery cloth and they turn to Cam and offer her the parcel and say it's a copy of my car key I had it made a while ago in case you know Bishop they don't compromise and they won't let me off the hook when they find out about me exchanging information outside of our organization let alone the fact that I am definitely not following their orders when it comes to you. Dante reaches for the pack of cigarettes somewhere inside their jacket, but then they realize that the pack has been soaked and they toss the useless pack on the back seat. And they turn to Cam again and just look her in the eye and, and say very calmly, I'm not sure what's going to happen to me, but we can expect that the same fate is going to 
apply to you. It doesn't have to be like that, though. So, if something happens to me, that's going to be your ticket to freedom. Use it and uh, leave this town. And they continue with a firm voice that doesn't really leave any room for objections and say, that's an order, Camino, now. If it comes to that, take the car, avoid the main roads, you're more likely to get pulled over on those. This way you should get enough time to get off the choir's radar. When it seems oh. like Dante has, for the most part, finished what they've been trying to say, Cam has been watching with a sort of slack-jawed, low-lidded disbelief, and eventually interrupts Dante with, Oh, what is this? You think I'm going to just learn how to drive so then I can drive away and then society's going to accept me? And wow, then you don't have to do that. She kind of like lifts up her shirt to show the center tattoo that she has the middle of her body and is like, do you even, it's been four years and you don't know how this contract works? I can't just go away if you die. You remember what happened to the last guy. That's why I'm even here with you. To keep me alive? To keep you alive and to keep me alive. If you die, they're just gonna give me somebody else. And then I'll have to take four years learning to like them too. I don't have that kind of time. I'm young and beautiful. I see. Like I said, if I die, that's, I have accepted it, but it doesn't have to be the same for you. Oh my god, you're so morose. Were you always like this? Stop. You're not gonna die. Oh my god. If anything, they're probably just gonna ask you to do something else that's harder than the stuff that you've been doing now. They're not gonna order an execution. They only do that on the little ones. <laughs> What do you owe this group anyways? Why don't we just start pulling the wires out from the inside? That would be kind of fun. If you think you're going to go, might as well go swinging. I mean, I kind of like your spirit. Thank you. But I was kind of hoping to, to figure out how to <laughs> break this. And they make a gesture with their hand, like back and forth between them break this connection, spell, whatever it is, and whatever you want to call it, and just give you a chance at a life of your choosing. Did you ever think to ask me what I wanted instead of deciding for me? What do you want, Camino? I want to stop whatever this conversation is, because it's bombing me out. Second of all, I want to go home. I don't want to live on the surface. I don't belong here. You know that. When they dragged me out, they made me assume whatever this is. I've gotten used to it. But as nice as it might seem to drive into the sunset and not have to be chained to a person who takes a look at me or whatever... I can just go back where I came from. I mean, it might be nice to be up here and have people not ask me to do stuff, I guess. But, like, if the option is integrate into society <laughs> or just go back home, I don't want to fucking stick around. Just, like, listen, all I want to do is have a good time and... Lately, I have been having a pretty good time. Don't try to get too comfortable with that. Make of that what you will, but as nice as this little plan is in theory, I don't really think it's going to work. And if you think you're about to get caught or something, I'd start coming up with alternative plans. I mean, what about the blue one? You don't think they can give us anything? I don't know. What happened to the message? I mean, I don't even think I had time to deal with that. I haven't seen them in so long. Do you need Javelin? Do you need to be in Javelin to be able to return home? You'd be surprised. Oh. 
I thought you were bound to me. Not this <laughs> place. Well, it's kind of like a combo. If you want it. And Dante looks away and trains their gaze on the vast desert ahead of them. Before continuing, if you want it, we could run away. You know, I wanted to be on your terms, not because you have to follow me around, but because you choose to do so. All right. Morgan, I'm going to ask you to make a dark roll. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a great feeling about this one, and that's a 10. All oh right. So <laughs> 10 is a complete success. You feel at the back of your head this conversation come into clarity for you, almost like you're seeing out of Cam's eyes, looking at Dante talking about this, and you hear Cam say, what about the blue one? And Dante tries to deflect from it, but you have already heard it, in fact. In this moment, what do you want to do? You're standing now, you've met up with Ash, you've met up with Micah, you, you're all together. What do you want to do? Morgan is going to shoot an icy, wide-eyed stare at Micah, putting the pieces together in her head. And does Morgan know where Haley is right now? Haley is uh, prepping the bags to go outside, so she's either at the stable or she's still in her room. Morgan's gonna go check in Haley's room for her. Literally say nothing and just like stares at Micah. And then just like leaves. turns around, turns around and, <laughs> and rushes to the stairs. Oh my god. Uh, also, this, Ash... this was just when Ash was coming over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Ash is like, does Morgan somehow know that I just ratted her out? <laughs> no, I think Ash tries to like hold him up. <laughs> Like, reaches oh. for their arm, like, hey, dude, what, what, what are you going? Because she was just, like, concerned about Morgan just a second ago. <laughs> oh, right, right, and then Morgan has an out-of-body disassociation. <laughs> yeah. Morgan will look down at where Ash has grabbed her. It's the cursed arm. Not, not oh. the, the one that got hurt. Yeah, and then we'll, like, brush her arm out of Ash's reach, and then say... I have to go talk to Haley about something, and then she's gonna w walk away. <laughs> Ooh, Ash tries again to like hold him up and says, "No, listen, I. We gotta get out of here. We can't stay at this place anymore." I know that, but <laughs> I got something private I have to talk to Haley about. She kind of looks over at the place that she's holding Morgan's arm, gives a look to the arm, and remembers what she saw. The night before, like that was this glowing and stuff, and Ash never saw it happen before. And then she says, "I gotta talk to you about something later. Just be sure to come down quickly." Morgan will nod and then head upstairs to find Haley. Ash, just before Morgan leaves, gives a squeeze on the arm Aww. and lets them go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And like looks over <laughs> and Micah like <laughs> confused, like what the heck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Morgan, you take this information and you use it to go up and talk to Haley. Dante Camino looks not like frustrated with you, but she just really genuinely doesn't understand. And she can't quite seem to convey that she doesn't have the luxury of just, like, upping and leaving. There is something very preternatural about her connection to this place. And she doesn't really believe that Dante's plan as it is right now can be executed in the way that they want it to. But she's having trouble conveying that. You can see on Cam's face that this is not really penetrating. Like, Cam has said... Let's burn this place down, I guess. If we're leaving, we should make sure nobody comes after us. Well, what do you want to say? You're just gonna, like, look at her for a moment and read what she's feeling or trying to get a read on her feelings before sobering up in a way 
and um, opening the door and gesturing for Cam to do the same thing because they're swapping places and returning to the town. As Cam sits back down in the passenger seat, she ruffles a hand through her hair and kind of messes it up. But I will say that she looks over at you and she feels conflicted. She's sort of confused about the whole situation, but in some way, even though she doesn't want to admit it, she appreciates it. So I'll give you a cam favor. Ooh. Thank you. Okay, and then they drive off. Back to the hotel? Yes. Okay. Well, I'd love to check in with Knox right now. Knox, what are you up to? Knox left just after Haley left, right? Was still around in the stair, like on mm-hmm. the third floor, I believe, or something. Um, yes, fourth floor, and then I guess walked back down. Right, yes. The idea is that I think Knox is going to go to Vera's shop to potentially grab something to eat. Just hang around a little bit, have a chat. He hasn't been there in a while. All right, well, did you go out the front door or did you go out the side door? I think Knox is going to go on the side door. Okay. Ash and Micah, you are standing in the middle of the altar where the convening people come and mill around before people leave. And you probably would have seen Knox out of the corner of your eye sort of moving towards the side door. Micah, can you make a dark roll for me? Ooh, okay, yeah. One second. A ten. Ooh, Holy yeah. shit! <laughs> so, all of you have been rolling so well. Ooh. So, Micah, that's the smell you've been smelling. It's coming from Knox. Smelling that from uh, distance yeah, away. <laughs> like, well, that's why it's not a passive thing you've discovered. You've looked into the abyss and you can tell like <laughs> that cologne smell is coming from Knox. Nox should stop wearing so much cologne. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You said Nox is heading out the side door of the altar? Yes. Mike is going to turn to Ash and be like, just to get you updated, Haley made the decision that we're leaving today. I believe she's packing things up. I'm going to go take care of some things outside. You're free to go help her or wherever i'll catch you later okay hey where are you going um following the trail of a certain scent if you catch my drift and i think it's worth checking out before we leave she just looks confused at the the mention of smells (laughs) 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 my guy's just gonna smile like (laughs) yeah yeah. Okay. Haley is definitely right. We should not be staying here. Just make sure to come back quickly, I guess. Just don't get in trouble again. Yeah, I'll try not to. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll just go get my stuff and meet me at the staples. Yeah, I'll be there soon. Okay. And Again, Ash just looks at them going away like with a suspicious look, like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Micah's gonna wink at Ash as they leave, walking backwards, give a wink, like, bye bye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ash is slightly amused. <laughs> just like, oh, another weirdo. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Micah, you begin to trail behind Knox. Knox, you're walking towards Barra's shop. You've had a lot to think about after your conversation with Haley and after your other conversation with Taya. Things have gotten a little bit confusing. The night before, Dante had punched you in the face and you watched as Tal approached Ash and then instead of taking care of the situation where they had a gun pointed at her... um, just tried to defuse it and then eventually got knocked out. So you've seen a lot of things in the last little while. Pieces have begun to snap from their original places. You make it to the outside of Vera's shop and you notice it's quiet. There's nobody really around. What do you want to do? What are you thinking? Just to be clear, is Micah trying to go and talk to Nox or just follow Nox? 
they're not really trying to be sneaky or anything. They're just gonna trail after Nox, and uh, I guess Nox would have to stop for Micah to actually be able to walk up and talk or interact, right? I think that so. if Maka is not trying to be sneaky or anything and just beeline <laughs> towards Nox, I think the Nox would pick up on that. When Nox feels like the head on the back of the neck, just like lift up a bit, like something is, there's something here. He just <laughs> turns around and sees this small person in front of them approaching. He kind of just pauses there and uh, uh, puts his hands on his pockets and raises his eyebrows waiting for them to approach. As Micah walks up to Nox, altogether giving off like a friendly vibe, this isn't like, hi, I'm stalking you and I'm gonna murder you now. Um, calmly approaching, they're gonna take out a cigarette and light it and as they're a bit closer to Nox, they go, hey there big guy, didn't we meet at the bar the other day? To that, Nox is still looking surprised, and it's quite difficult to understand if he's feigning surprise or he's actually confused and he doesn't remember because he sees too many people. But then he goes like, "Oh wait, yeah, you're the that little cowboy that didn't want to leave when I asked repeatedly. Yeah, I remember you." And he gives a sort of creepy little smile. A creepy smile. All right, mm-hmm. that's that's fine. That's good. <laughs> Mike is gonna like huff and smile, nonetheless, and uh, answer. Yeah, you know, was a little troublesome evening, but yeah, apologies for that. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself to you. Micah is the name. Hi there, Micah. When Micah like huffs the smoke out of the cigarette. He keeps looking at <laughs> Micah without blinking and the smoke goes to his face and he just takes one of his hands, still like keeping eye contact and brushes the smoke away from his face a little bit. Uh, I'm Nox. Nox? Yeah. No, that's a fine sounding name. And Micah's going to make sure to not blow any more smoke into Nox's face. So, well, it's very uh, nice to meet you. So, like, did you wake up today wanting to meet me and discover my name? Is there something I can help you with? Mike is gonna act very over the top and very silly and go, I've been wanting to find out your name ever since I saw you at that bar. (laughs) And then crack a smile. No, I just saw you earlier and I wanted to, as I said, meet you because, you know, Haley mentioned whole thing you two have going on to us you know kind of clear things up and yeah Nox's demeanor shifts just slightly I'm not sure if Micah would pick up on that but um, I think that Nox uh, he was kind of leaning on one leg and it shifts slightly to lean on the other one and he says "Uh uh-huh okay so what is it that you actually want? And it becomes a bit more serious. Micah's gonna take another drag of the cigarette and look at Knox and reply. I just wanted to see what kind of person you are. You know, I've only heard things about you and you being part of the choir. Well, I'm sure you can understand. That it's a bit tricky and it's difficult to sometimes blindly trust, at least for some people. (laughs) So don't take it personally. You seem friendly and like a nice guy, but I think it's best to check for yourself sometimes and see what kind of vibe a person gives off, right? When Micah says, just to check because you're part of the choir, Nox crosses his arms and uh, it's kind of keeping a somewhat natural face. It's kind of difficult to read his face now, especially because he has also dark sunglasses. And it keeps a bit quiet. And at some point, it goes, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that, you know? What's wrong with the choir? And it gives a bit of a dark smile. Almost looks like there is a glint in his eyes. 
And then, before Micah can reply, says, Yeah, I get it. You obviously want to check who you're talking to, right? Knocks eyes, Micah, up and down. Again, with conflicting aura. <laughs> it's very big, and Micah probably feels kind of small <laughs> in front of Nux. Yeah, Micah's gonna hum and smile at Nox and go, By the way, you got a really nice cologne you're wearing. It smells really good. Micah, you have to roll hot for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't make the rules. <laughs> oh my god, yes, roll hot. I dare you. I'm sorry, oh. you compliment a mask on their cologne. Yeah, um. that's like the highest form of intimacy there is. Come on. Wow, Nox, you smell so good. Like, are you kidding me? Oh my god, this is so fucking funny. I have funny. minus one. This Let's will go, go. badly. Oh. <laughs> is a complete success so oh that means God. that you get a Nox string um, oh my God. and then Nox you get to decide do you get embarrassed and act awkward promise something you think that Micah wants or do you give yourself to the situation oh <laughs> uh, I think he's gonna give himself to the situation and that's what's gonna happen <laughs> okay so when Micah says they like the smell of the cologne, Nox gets that as Micah flirting with him. That is no question about that. And he raises his eyebrows and he gets kind of closer and leans, uh, gives a bit of his neck area. And he's like, do you want me to tell you like where I got it from? And he smiles. He doesn't look as creepy right now. But he's being cheeky in some ways. Micah, when Nox approaches you and gets this close, you can see some of the color of Nox's eyes like peeking out from the glasses. <laughs> the glow has gotten a little bit closer, and so you can see the almost like serpentine eyes behind them. And as he brings their neck towards you, you can also see that there's kind of a shimmering pattern beneath the tattoo. Could be scar tissue or it could be something else. Shook. (laughs) 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 Michael just like petrified. He's not actually petrified, but he's petrified. (laughs) (laughs) My guess is, Haley, I'm so sorry for doubting you. I totally understand. (laughs) (laughs) My guess is, like, Haley, that's a good one. (laughs) Yeah, okay, let's do it. Haley, you did a great job. I'm actually going to say that Micah is I'm surprised by the sudden change of Nox from rather a little bit creepy and scary to actually more friendly and leaning in like that. Hello. And is going to eye the tattoo and the neck and take notice of the shimmer as well as the glow of the eyes and be like in their head. Oh, okay. Um, and that's that. That's the thought in that <laughs> moment. Um, and Mike is going to reply, yeah, where did you get that? After that, Nox leans back and uh, takes one or two steps backwards. And he says, <laughs> can I actually say the better sells this shit? You know what? I think it's camp. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's real. <laughs> And uh, Nox is going to say, I know it sounds probably insane, but that actually sells some sort of like, I wouldn't call it contraband, but like under the table stuff. And I'm not exactly sure where she got this from, but uh, it's so good. So Micah's going to make a little ooh sound and um, tip their hat and go... 
Well, thanks for the little tip. I'll, that's good to know <laughs> where you get the good stuff. It's not yeah. easy to, yeah. <laughs> Mike is going to smile a, a little bit. <laughs> like, just the tiniest of fluster, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the Nox, although I was playing up just because it wanted to be cheeky, it didn't really care about me. Micah. He kind of finds it cute though. This whole interaction is funny in a positive way in some ways. So he puts his hands back in his pockets and smiles a little bit and feels like he's waiting to see if Micah wanted anything else from him. <laughs> They're actually gonna look at Nox with an with a earnest look in their eyes and go, well Nox, I hope I'll be seeing you around. And then take their leave towards the stables, the front of the altar. And to that, when Micah is leaving, he just says, See ya, cowboy, and turns around and just heads towards Vera's shop. All right. Okay, well, <laughs> took you. that was indescribably <laughs> delightful. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No idea. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is what happens when you trifle with me. You're like, oh, you smell so good. I'm like, no, you are hitting on that. <laughs> um, hey, everybody. We hope you're enjoying the episode so far. We wanted to try something a little different for this episode and potential upcoming episodes by including an intermission at the halfway point. Think of it sort of like a chance to grab some tea, a place to bookmark your timestamp in this episode to return to later, or a save file. <laughs> We're experimenting with this feature, so feel free to let us know in the comments if you like it. Thanks so much for watching, and Wasteland Gospel will return in just a few minutes.
Okay, so I'm gonna return to Morgan, but just to give everybody an idea of where their characters are. Tal, you have been following Taya around the corner of the altar, circling back to get back in through the main door. Dante, you are returning around the same time in the car with Cam to get back into the altar hotel. Ash, you are in the center foyer of the altar completely by yourself. Micah is outside with Knox. Knox, you've made it into the curiosity shop and Morgan is on the way up to Haley's room. So, uh, Morgan, when you make it to Haley's room, you can see that she has these two saddlebags on either shoulder and she's taken off outer layers because she seems like she's sweating a lot from all of the packing. Stuff like that. She's just wearing a clean tank top that she's changed into. And she's put her hat back on. And she has her chaps and she she looks ready to get going. And then as she turns, she sees you approaching. What do you want to say to Haley? Why did you come here? Morgan's going to lean up against the door and say, You got a sec? Very well, I always got a sec. What, what's going on? I thought I told you to go get the kid. Um, <laughs> Morgan's going to smile a little and kind of just stroll in and say we found the kid but I found something interesting I think you might want to hear Haley quirks an eyebrow at that and her little yellowy eyes glow a little bit they kind of gleam and then she smiles and is like all right well don't keep me waiting what's going on Miss Marshall have you uh, ever considered that recently we might have a mole in our ranks or something <laughs> Well, I mean, you're all very creative, but do you have other friends? I personally don't, but I don't know. Do you think it's possible? You know, sometimes I think that the strategic exchange of information can kind of look like ratting out on somebody, but sometimes I think that if you're able to stay one step ahead of that person, then you can always double back. Why do you bring this up? What's going on? A little birdie told me that our blue-haired friend might know someone on, in the choir. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> I heard that dog from the other day refer to Micah. Really? Sounded like they were a bit familiar with him. The dog that nearly ripped your arm off. All right, we can ignore that part. Um, <laughs> but, <Duh>. yes. <laughs> Don't you think that would have been nice information to have? Why would they be working together? That doesn't make any sense to me. Either. I mean, maybe they just know each other, but I heard what I heard. Haley seems to ponder this for a little bit and then looks back at Morgan and opens the floor to her to see if she has any anything to read on this, what she really thinks of the situation. I just think that things are getting a bit heated up here is all and I don't know if there's anyone dragging us down it might just be better to cut them out you'd soon enough get rid of them huh I feel like it might be better to not have loose ends but <laughs> all right so as far as we know does Micah have any idea that you might know this how did you acquire this information I don't think they know at all, but something weird happened with that dog. I think it, like, something's off about it for sure. But I can, like, hear it now. What? <laughs> I I can, like, I saw, like, through its eyes and shit. Like, it was kind of crazy, but I don't know. Like, ever since I woke up with the bite. Hmm. Well, that's gonna come in handy. And Haley kind of smiles in a sinister way. <laughs> Morgan will also smile. <laughs> Do you think that it goes both ways? No idea. Oh, I don't want to have to be careful around you, darling. I mean, if it, if it makes you feel better, you have full permission to put a bullet in my head if I ever go against you. Oh my goodness, you take those words out of your mouth. You know I'm not going anywhere without you. Alright, well, the way I see it, Micah doesn't know that we know. And I like to have a little bit on everybody. So, why don't we just keep this quiet 
for just a little and then it might prove itself real useful you think we can maybe drag out some information we might be able to if it's something serious like Mike has been talking about us to him maybe they've been telling Micah things exactly all right you want to get down to the stable are we gonna find Kit there yeah they're downstairs all right let's go find our little troublemaker let's get the fuck out of this hotel mm -hmm. sound good of course Haley kind of <laughs> without even asking lobs one of the bags <laughs> over your shoulders <laughs> because she's so little <laughs> she's just like you carry it this she's time she's so tiny <laughs> and I add a little thing real quick just before you continue with Haley and Morgan sure yeah I'd say that Ash went up to her room just got whatever she had that was important but she doesn't really have many items with her and I'd say maybe when she runs out maybe they're running out as well of the room okay yeah like they can definitely cross paths for a moment if you'd like like at the elevator or something like that yeah just like big when she's heading out as well to the stables oh and then Morgan will mm. also grab her stuff from her room as they head out yeah okay Morgan Ash and Haley are all together now right I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So, as the three of you make it out to the stables, Haley pauses for a moment, touches her tongue to the inner corners of her teeth, and then looks at Ash and says, Where's Micah? Ash kind of leaves a big sigh. They went outside for a moment, but they promised that they would be back quickly. Do you so, know why they did that? Not really. They're so, like, cryptic sometimes. I can't understand. They're just talking about <laughs> smelling something. I don't get it. Haley's gonna exchange a look with Morgan. <laughs> like, it doesn't look good for you. And, Micah, were you turning around and heading back to the altar? I was originally gonna go to the stables. Okay, so... Micah, you're walking to the stables. Dante, you've pulled up in the car. All of you guys are outside. Tal and Taya are crossing over, about to head into the hotel. And Max is the only one who's out of, <laughs> out of the situation. He is in the shop. He's just like, I want some snack. <laughs> Everyone else is corralled outside the central area of the altar. Dante, when you see the coven standing at the stables and then Tal and Taya walking towards the front door, what do you do? I think Dante is just gonna lean against the car and watch them as they leave. Tal, do you have anything you want to do or say when you see Dante just like leaning against the car and then notice out of the corner of your eye that there's a group of people rustling at their horses? Mm. So everybody is there. I'm screaming. Yeah, everybody is there except for Knox. <laughs> what is wrong with this hotel? I can't get any rest. <laughs> <laughs> Tal never gets to rest. God damn. <laughs> it's like everybody's checking out of the Airbnb. I have to pretend the weekend never happened. Like <laughs> <laughs> Tal seeing Dante like quips to Tay really quick saying, Hey, I'll uh I'll be back. I think I'm gonna talk to Dante really quick about last night. Uh Taya nods and uh dryly smiles to themselves as they go into the hotel and then uh, before they walk in again um tal is gonna be like hey um thank you again about like the talk on the vista t knows how you feel mm -hmm. and hopes that you understand too but there's always going to be a level of taya that you're not really sure of yet but mm -hmm. they nod and they head back inside let you do what you have to do. Okay. Tal is gonna saunter towards Dante while looking over at the stables. Like, they're just packing up and stuff. Yeah, they're getting ready. Is anyone looking over at, like, Tal and Dante? 
I think the coven is probably pretty occupied, but if Morgan or Ash, are you surveying the area or you're just kind of focusing on getting the horses together? I think Morgan might just be like casually looking around. Okay. Tal approaches Dante and says, um, hey, morning. Hey, what's up? Yeah, what is up? You want to fill me in on what happened last night? I was kind of, I think points to their forehead and then puts their hand down. Yeah, I saw there was uh, a lot happening last night. Do you by chance have a smoke? I'm really craving one. Tal doesn't keep cigarettes on them. They actually only smoke if they smoke with Taya. Tal goes, no, sorry, I don't have anything on me. I mean, I have a light. That's about it. Apologetically looks to the floor before looking back up at them again. Um, Tal observes how they look. Do they look any different? Like, do they have any injuries that they didn't have the day before? Um, they are definitely covered in mud. At least mud. You know, where yeah, where they fell last night when Knox pushed them. Oh boy. Um, yeah, Tal is just looking at all this crusted clay and mud on them, and is like, do you have a? rough chase or something yeah you could say that i kind of missed whatever started happening downstairs uh what happened to you like someone got you good and then points at their forehead tal takes their hat readjusts again so that it, the wound isn't showing as much and then doesn't say anything just takes a small like sharp breath in and then doesn't really divulge into the subject matter of what happened to them um, and then continues on. Is more interested about what Taya had told them. Yeah, I think Dante registers the omission uh, and doesn't push more. I had a chat with mm. Taya. Been, Do you uh, <laughs> talk been... to Knox? Oh yeah, that, that went mm. well. Um, we kind of got into a fight. Here? Um, Last night? I was, I was trying to get to Ash. And for some reason, he tried to stop me. And before you worry, I promise I wasn't going to hurt her. You told me you didn't want me to hurt her. So I respect you. I like you. I wouldn't go against you or against your word. I genuinely just wanted to talk anyways and uh, Knox had a problem with that and yeah I kind of punched him I did give him a fair warning though so that's on him Tal kind of is like biting the inside of their cheek a little bit just taking in some of the information like how different things sound how similar things sound and then says so you were Running, though, was Ash running away from you? I don't... I'm not sure. I only chased after her when when everyone turned around, and uh, I guess you were knocked out at that point, but... Cam had some fun with Rogers, and, uh, you know, everyone turned their attention to that. Ash snuck out, and I went mm -hmm. after her. I see. I needed to obtain those documents, but I failed. It's uh, been a complicated, what, 72 hours, 48 hours? Yeah, tell me about it. I am curious, though. Why didn't you do anything just now? when Ash was at the front of the door. You were there, I thought. I figured mm. you would want to handle her. No need for me to in interfere. What happened though? Like, did you get her? Did you and T get mm. her? Don't think it'd be smart to do that on alter grounds considering everything that's happened 
probably got to just do it some other way. Also, listen, I know I asked you for help and stuff, but honestly, like, I just... Maybe we don't really have to worry about them very much anymore. Uh, I'm going to have to figure something else out. You don't need to worry about it. And sorry if you got into any trouble because of it. No, I don't worry about it. You know, just doing mm. my job. Tap is still trying to search their thoughts of what else they can ask. And then says, like, it's okay. I'll let you get cleaned up and stuff. You probably look like you need some time to yourself. Um, have you seen Knox this morning at all? I can say that I have. No. Mm. But yeah, a hot shower doesn't sound too bad right now, not gonna lie. I think a hot shower can fix a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, thanks for wanting to talk to Ash. I I'm still trying to figure out what happened last night. I feel like I don't have everything. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I can't tell you more. I wasn't really around. Tal just kind of shakes their head, kind of like, it's cool. It's good. Um... Mm. And then says, uh, do you need anything? Are you good? Yeah, I think I'm good. Do you maybe know where they're going? Seems like they're packing off. And then they gesture with their head towards the direction of the coven. Tal puts their thumb on the inner lining of their belt and then tilts their head back looking at the stable. Um, and then kind of looks back to Dante and is like, yeah, I'm not sure where they're going, but I'm sure they just want to cool off considering, you know, mm. seemed like it wasn't a very fun night for anybody. Might be for the yeah. best. Maybe. And then Tal clears their throat and then says, um, I know we don't talk too often, but like, if you ever need anything, you could always just ask me or ask Taya. You know that, right? Dante has this kind of a sad smile that reaches their eyes, but just for a moment before they go back to their uh, usual stone face and say, uh, yeah, I don't know, I can count on you, Tal. Tal inhales through their nose and then gives like a few little nods and then just says, okay, okay, good. All right, well, I'm going to go try and find Nox and um, yeah. Maybe, Maybe check on them if they're okay, because I feel like I did quite a number on them last night. <laughs> Tal looks up towards the sky and is like, sighs, and then says, you know, we shouldn't hurt each other. <sighs> I guess you're right. But someone needs to tell that to Nox as well. I swear to God, it wasn't me who started this fight. <sighs> I mean, there had to be some reason. Nox is very relaxed. There had to be something going on. <sighs> Again, like, yeah. we really shouldn't be hurting each other. Like, we could just talk, you know? We've all been family for a minute now. I could trust you that you won't deck me in the face if you get upset. So <laughs> yeah, let's, try to, <laughs> let's try to avoid that in the future. But yeah, anyways, I... I'll figure it out. I just don't understand why they would want me to stop from completing Taya's order. Something that I can't put together. I would put input, but I'm not sure exactly everything that happened could have been the way things were done. We follow a certain unofficial way of doing things, right? So maybe something Nox saw upset him and maybe felt like they needed to stop you, uh, whatever it was, I can't say. Again, I'm not blaming anybody. I just, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I'll ask Knox about it, okay? Yeah, you should do that. Get their side of the story. I can only speak for myself. Yeah. Um, well, all right then. Um, and then Tal kind of stretches their back again. Um, looks back at the stable again one more time and then scuffs their boot on like the dirt and then um, says, all right, I'll catch you in a little while then. I'll go sure. try and scope the town really quick. If you hear anything, if you see anything, if you remember anything, I'll just um, be around town. As Tal is walking away, I think Dante's gonna call their name real quick and say, same for you. You can count on me if you need anything. 
And then they also like start walking away from the car and head towards the altar. Tao, where do you end up going? Into the town? Yeah, just probably like we're at the entrance of the altar. I mean, Vera's shop is just right across from the altar, so maybe instinct is go to across the parking lot. <laughs> just check out the little like street and area there. Yeah, you could probably head there. Nox, you walked into Vera's shop after talking to Micah for a moment, and you look around for a little, and Vera pops up from behind the counter and smiles at you. Well, what did you want to do in Vera's shop? What did you come here for? The original idea uh, why Nox went there is, well, wanted to buy some <laughs> food, right? But also kind of like chit-chat with Vera a little bit. Nox knows that like it's probably going to live for a little bit he doesn't know how long he doesn't think he's gonna live for too long and sometimes he goes on like little trips here and there so he's not too worried about that specifically but i i like to imagine that every time that he leaves for some time he kind of visits vera just a little thing like that and gets something to buy and then goes so i think that i'd like to see if nox looks around as well other than just food, I was wondering if there would be anything that could pique his interest that he can find. If you look around, you'll notice Popsicle is kind of on the, the front desk, <laughs> running around a little bit, Vera took her out of the cage. And you'll also see that somewhere around the floor, it looks like there's a hat on the ground. Did you want to go look at it? Uh, yes, before I do that, when uh, Nox enters the, the shop and looks at the counter where Vera is, he gives a little smile and a little nod with his head to greet Vera. And then like when he walks in the shop, he sees the hat and stops in front of it and actually picks it up. Howdy, bright eyes. <laughs> oh, sorry, that one's not for sale. <laughs> oh, maybe. And he just grabs the hat and like turns in the rounds like why is this down here then oh sometimes i have the kookiest customers they just come on by and they forget stuff that that's just going in my lost and found if you know what i mean uh nox just hums and uh, looks at the hat what does the hat say the hat says bad guy <laughs> nox kind of <laughs> cheekily looks at vera and puts it on it's like you sure? Can't I buy this? And he kind of like just adjusts it on his head, just like trying to fit it. I think that the way that it's made right now is a bit too small <laughs> for his head. Yeah, um, I'd say so. So like he takes it out and from the back just makes it a bit <laughs> larger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Specs. <laughs> Don't mess with that. Come on, give it back. Oh. All right, fine. Just because he asks so nicely. And he gives a little smile and walks to the counter and gives him back to Vera. <laughs> Sorry. She, she takes it and affectionately brushes the top down like she's trying to keep it safe. And then she puts it behind the counter in one of the little cubbies with all of the antiques and stuff behind it. So, now that you're done <laughs> looking for lost items, what can I get for you? He's leaning on the counter, and I think he's kind of looking around. And then if there is any sort of little food for Popsicle around, I think with his long limbs, he'll just try to grab it and call for Popsicle. If she's around, like, just try to dingle it in front of uh, the creature. <laughs> I'm going to say, so Popsicle eats bugs. If you were capable, you could probably find a bug and pick it up and give it to Popsicle. <laughs> Popsicle's just kind of on the main display cabinet where the cash register is. Vera might have a box of crickets. You might be able to take a cricket from the box with your bare hands if you wanted to. Should I roll for that if I can manage to pull that off? <laughs> yeah, roll volatile. Why not? Okay. Ah, seven. <laughs> Mercifully, you did not knock the box of crickets all over the ground. <laughs> oh my god. For Vera to clean up. Um, oh my god. 
So you're able to pick one up with your hands. Maybe the box moves for a second, but you're able to get it under control. Ferris watching you with wide, confused eyes as you hold this creature in your hands. So what did you want to do? As soon as he holds the cricket, it kind of gives a quick glance at Vera uh, again with a cheeky... Sort of creepy, but I don't think that Vera will find it creepy. Smile, and it would just lift it towards Popsicle's display and just wrap it there. Popsicle takes the cricket and gobbles it up like the little tiny lizard that she is. Also, I'm not <laughs> sure if I have mentioned this audibly, but Popsicle is a little bearded dragon. <laughs> uh, after feeding, Vera kind of looks at you and chuckles to herself and is like, Ah, birds of a feather. I'm sure she'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say hi, you know, and see how you're doing. And also look at the counter again and with the other hand, uh, grab a pack of salted snacks or whatever it, that is there, if there is anything at all. Also this, and then just like show it to Vera. There's probably, like, some beef jerky and, like, prickly pear candy that you can grab. Mm -hmm. And Vera kind of, not, like, flushes, but she seems to sort of glow a little bit pink after you say, Oh, I just came by to visit. She's like, Oh, little of me? Wow. Um, She's so cute. And (laughs) she rings you up at the cash and passes the stuff to you. And is sort of like, All right. um, Got everything you need. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I might be out of town for a little while. I'll probably be back soon, but just wanted to let you know. While he's saying that, he's not really looking at Vera. He's fumbling around with his newly bought stuff in his hands, just like turning around and whatnot. Vera smiles and says, Yeah, when you get back, you come back around here, okay? I'll have uh, maybe a new hat for you so that you don't have to take my employees. <laughs> Nux makes a, a quick reminder that like that bad guy cap is of Vera's employee in his mind. And uh, he says, yeah, sure. I'll take you up for that word. Uh, if next time I come here and I don't have a cap, something bad will happen. And he gives a fake serious face and then it just like <laughs> grins a little bit okay well do you think you're gonna exit the shop now yes he's gonna do that he's gonna just say see you around and then just give a sign with this hand i don't know if that means anything i just made a sound uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah no. <laughs> just, good. just leave the shop yeah So, Micah, you are just now catching up once again with the coven. Is there anything you want to say to everybody when they're all convened? They're packing up Chief right now, and Haley's about to move to Deputy. To Micah, things seem relatively normal, except that Morgan ran off earlier after giving them an icy glare. But they're going to give a greeting to everyone and be like, Hey, can I help anything? Are we good to go? Do either of you guys say anything? I think Morgan's okay on packing. Yeah, I think Ash just looks them over and is like, did you get in trouble? Would I be standing here if I got into trouble? Come on, Peach! And gives a smile. (laughs) Peach! (laughs) (laughs) Now that everyone finally is in one place, I think Ash just looks them over and says to Haley specifically to get their attention, Marshall, I got a clue on something and I had to trade some information with Chrissy. Haley looks at you and raises her eyebrows and doesn't really say anything. Apparently they were not surprised that that person that came after Morgan is part of the choir and She didn't really care that they were making a mess of the hotel. That's really strange. You think maybe they have some kind of deal going? Chrissy doesn't usually let stuff like that fly. And neither does the high command of the fucking, you know. I don't know, but 
Chrissy was very interested to know who they were here for. So I had to say that they had some beef with Morgan and they kind of look over at her. Beef is, I think, an exaggeration. I would not personally have called it that, but... Well, I don't know the details, okay? I just... <laughs> I needed to know something, and it's the location for something we're looking for. Mm. What did you find? I got a feeling that, I'm not sure if you could call it vision or whatever, I just saw this place and there was an item there that I think could cure or you so I, I described it to Chrissy and they gave me the location to Distal Lake what did you say this item was again? I didn't I'd like to know Ash just keeps quiet for a moment it was some kind of lace Haley's eyes go like really big like a cat that's chasing a mouse and she claps both hands on Ash's shoulders, like it shakes her a little bit. Um, <laughs> Ash is pretty weird and out in her face, you can clearly see. <laughs> and she doesn't really like shake her, but she squeezes and she's smiling a lot. And she was like, oh my god, your mind is so brilliant. I love that we kept you around. Oh my god. It's not just a little bit of lace it's part of a dress and it's not gonna heal you but if we find it oh this is really great news what do you know about it what dress uh, i don't really know if we should talk about it here but i'll just tell you that all of these objects that we're looking for they have special properties right and the Legend has it that when you have all of them in the same place, we'll be able to find what we're looking for. But on their own, they can do things for you. Things that no other object can. And this one has a resistance to one of the elements. I think that it would be really useful if we went looking for it. Ashkinda just gives, like, kind of a sigh. <laughs> But with a, a smile <laughs> on her face, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, of course, it wouldn't be that easy. So, we gotta lead to that. How did you have this vision again? I don't really get it. I touched the door, I was next to someone. I don't know. Well, Stuff like this happens sometimes because you're in the right place at the right time, maybe with the right person. If you want, we could try to replicate those conditions. Maybe we could find out where other objects are, something that maybe you're looking for, right, kid? Um, we can get back to that. And Ash is just thinking to herself, oh, <laughs> getting back next to the person that, it, that was Tao. Yeah, they just avoid <laughs> looking at Haley. Does Morgan or Micah see anything to this? Would Morgan know anything about what they're talking about? Morgan would know like what Haley means when she says the objects that they're looking for all have specific properties, but I'm not sure how you would feel about the mission to find them or if you're just in it because Haley's in it. Oh, so, okay, gotcha. Yeah. In that case, yeah, Morgan would probably just be, like, nodding her head throughout the conversation. Micah would also be listening along and smiling, encouraging uh, to Ash, like, good job. And when she's not actually that excited, they don't really know what to make of it, so they don't question it or ask her about it, though. I think when they don't say anything, she just says to Haley, that's... Another one for the list that we gotta follow. I'm so happy we know where it is. 
Maybe we could split up. Maybe Ash, you could take one of these two rascals with you. What do you think? Who would you want to bring? Do you really think it's a good idea? Haley kind of laughs and then goes back to what she's doing. Once that conversation is done, they look over at Morgan again and giving them a once over <laughs> the, their state at the moment. <laughs> they were concerned the previous night and they just ran away when shit got really messed up. I think Ash says to Morgan, I'm glad you're still up here with us. I wasn't really sure last night. Morgan will take that in and give Ash a nod and say, um, yeah, it'll take more than that to put me in the ground. Thanks. Mm. Can I see it again? <laughs> see what? She looks over at her arm. Which one? The cursed one or the <laughs> fucked up one? <laughs> I love the idea that Morgan wouldn't know. <laughs> That's Morgan asks. <laughs> well, which arm is Ash signaling to? The cursed one. Oh, okay. Morgan, like, lifts an eyebrow but offers Ash the arm. It is still wrapped, though, so... Can I? And cheek motions to unwrap it. <laughs> By all means. Ash gently unwraps part of the arm up until the point that she can see. Is it scars? So the texture of it, like up close, is scar-like. If you touch the markings and stuff, they do feel like scars on the skin. Um, since it's not like currently active. It's the same coloration of scars. Mm. So it's not glowing at the moment? No. Morgan's okay. gonna look away and do it like an awkward cough. Like <clears throat> Ash looks a bit fascinated at the moment so she doesn't like really pay attention. She mm -hmm. does touch the scar up to the point that she opens it a bit and asks How does it work? To be honest, I... I'm not entirely sure. I just wing it. Like, sometimes it just does stuff, and I don't know. I can't really control it sometimes. It's a bit weird. Mm. Why do you ask? It's just nice knowing it works. Oh, that was <laughs> ominous. <laughs> and I think she leaves, like, Morgan to wrap it back for herself. But yeah. Morgan? I'm gonna say that it's a pretty vulnerable thing to let somebody handle your arm. It's like kind of tender and you just sort of let Ash do it. Um, so I'm gonna say that you give Ash a string, actually. Ooh, Ooh. okay. <laughs> okay, so quickly I'm going to jump over to Nox and now Tal, who is approaching. They're just crossing paths with each other, potentially. Nox, you've got your little bag of treats, and Tao, you're coming back from your conversation with Dante. What do you two want to say to each other as you guys approach? Uh, Tao has actually this surprised look on their face. Oh, it took a lot less time to find Nox, and he's so easy to spot <laughs> from in front of the shop. Just holding a um, small little bag of whatever snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Some sun chips, no big deal. Oh man. Who is gonna um, spot who first? Let's make it so that like when Nox is leaving the shop. So he's just like mm -hmm. walking outside, looking mm -hmm. down and he's in the process of grabbing some food from inside the bag. Probably Tal spots him first. Nox is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> BB designed this like scary snake dyke and then Nox just ends up being this big fluffy fella <laughs> yeah I love it upon seeing Nox Tal is like surprised oh shit there he is and then graduates to like a slow jog across the parking lot and then Tal calls out like hey Nox as soon as Nox hears Tal call for him <clears throat> he looks up <clears throat> And he actually gives a big smile, like, hey, mm. sleepyhead, you slept a lot yesterday, didn't you? Oh my gosh, right when Nox lifts their head, can they see their black eye 
leaking from behind their sunglasses. Maybe since you have the knowledge that Dante punched yeah. Nox, you yeah. would probably look around the face to see if, if you see anything, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Oh my gosh, Nox just smiling with this big shiner on his face. I'm gonna cry. Um, and then when they get close enough, Tal is kind of taken aback a bit, like uh, what Dante was saying was legit. Hey, how are you doing? And then is gesturing towards their own face around the eye area and is like, does that hurt? And he kind of like raises his eyebrows because to be totally frank, he forgot about that, Bruce. Mm. <laughs> so like with one finger on his left hand, he pokes at it a little bit. Oh, uh, it's fine. To be totally fair, I just want Dante to feel sorry about it. I'm okay. <laughs> Tal almost can't resist but smile at that a little bit because of how casual Nox is about it. <laughs> but says, yeah, I, uh, I kind of um, heard... Before Tal says that, I'm just imagining Tal like, <laughs> trying to formulate a sentence <laughs> and Nox yeah. just stopping him and saying, like, what about you? How are you doing? I suppose you were sleeping for a while, right? You were not <sighs> unconscious. Yeah. Um, what happened last night? I, I mean, I heard you carried me to my room. Um, yeah, with so. my big, strong arms. Tal's previous smile just gets a little bit bigger and then is shaking their head a bit because of how silly Nox is. <laughs> <laughs> and says, yeah, you sure did. Um, and I did want to say thank you for that. I uh, didn't think I got hit so hard. Th- I mean, I'm okay. Uh, just woke up a little discombobulated. Mm-hmm. And then tilts their hat a little bit and then shows Nox the, the little bit of like the wound or gash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, to that, like Nox leans forward a little bit and follow his eyebrows. He, he does like a, ooh, ouch. That must hurt. Tal shrugs and then readjusts their hat a bit and then says, it'll be fine. I feel like I've had worse. Yeah, we have strong cookies, right? <laughs> Nox and just, just like a smiling in a goofy <laughs> dumb way. <laughs> oh my god, Nox is so precious. Oh goodness. Um, yeah, Tal just nods and is still smiling. Um, to be to be fair, I kind of genuinely want to ask you though. And Nox says, and it, it gets a bit more serious. When I entered the room, you were basically already unconscious. So like, I'm not exactly sure what happened. To lead to that. Tal's jaw kind of tightens a little bit. And then they take a deep inhale through their nose. And then they say, you know that uh, person with the pink hair? Have you seen them around? He kind of furrows his eyebrows a bit. Ash doesn't really stand out. That's the thing. Like, Ash is so Mm. meek, you know? (laughs) Incognito. Yeah, Yeah. so I don't think that Nox would have thought much about Ash. Nox doesn't even reply, it just like shrugs and he's like, I don't know. Uh, and then seeing like that Nox looks a little lost continues anyway and then says, uh, well, there was like a shooter in the lobby. Taya told me her name was Quinn or something and she was running some sort of task. I'm not sure, but I'm assuming that's where Ash, the pink haired person that I was talking about, got their hand on a gun and had it pointed at me and um i was choked onto my knees and then i got knocked out and remembering how Haley's tail <laughs> wrapped around their neck <laughs> um tal then remembers like a conversation that they've been wanting to have with fox about this so-called marshal and speaking of which the person that choked me, they had a tail. I think you know her. Um, y'all were talking the other night. Mm-hmm. And Tal kind of is carefully treading this. Because the night at the bar, Nox seemed like, don't say anything. That me and this person are talking. That maybe Taya might not sit well with it. So Tal is careful with their words. And then they ask, like, I'm not sure if how well you know them, but did you know they can do something like that? 
do that and Nox gives a small pause and he puts like two fingers on his chin and he's kind of like pretending to think deeply and he says hmm I mean I know so many people with a tail so it's gonna be a bit difficult to exactly know which person you're talking about <laughs> A towel is just searching Nox's face to see it. <laughs> uh, and then Tal just chooses to ignore that. Doesn't really cry on that. And then says, does Marshall ring a barrel? Uh, when Tal actually drops the name, Nox drops a pocket face and gives a small sigh. And he's like, yeah, I know Marshall. Tal is just nodding their head and is calculating what they should say next. The other night, I wanted to talk to you about it, but I respect your business, just like you've respected mine. You know, we trust each other and stuff. So I'm not saying you're in trouble or anything. You're not. I just want to know what's going on. Like, I mean, maybe you have a. Maybe I want a bit of travel, and Uh, Max gives a bit of a cheeky grin. Tell Actually, let me let me roll for her to that. <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay. Oh, yeah. Why the hell not? <laughs> Let's go. He just wants to be cheeky, and I want to see if he uh, works. I love how cheeky Knox is. Holy shit! Five. Oh. <laughs> uh, All right. Knox, do you want to describe how you fail, or do you want me to describe? Please how you tell me how much I failed, please. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna say that because you have the condition creepy, the sort of air of charm and cheekiness that you're trying to convey in this moment, it seems a little bit smarmy to you, Tao. Maybe not super trustworthy. So, Tao, mm. you can give Nox a condition for failing that role, and Nox, you should mark experience. Okay. Mm. God, what's a good condition? Um, if you need help, I can help you. Yes, please help. Okay, you have one more chance to deny that offer because I will make things bad for you. <laughs> oh God, um, that's kind of fun though. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, All right, it so Knox, your flirtation was maybe I like a bit of trouble, right? Mm-hmm. Well, Tal, you're looking for a mole, and <laughs> Knox is. Not looking oh, no. super trustworthy oh, right shit. now. No. <laughs> so I'm gonna give Nox the condition suspicious. Sus. Nox is sus. <laughs> Nox is suspicious. Yeah, that's what happens. Oh my god. Oh no. lordy. <laughs> Tal, in hearing, oh, maybe I like a little bit of trouble, doesn't hit them the right way. Suddenly, like, Tal kind of feels like, oh, maybe I should watch what I'm saying. But nonetheless, is interested to see if they can garner more information. And then they say, yeah, trouble, like, gonna be causing trouble for us? Or it's a little sharp. I think that Nox is clearly seeing that, like, his joking vibe is not really hitting Tao. So he kind of backs off a little bit, still smiling. I mean, like, I mean, do you want it traveling for us? But obviously it's not hitting because he kind of gives in more to the suspicion that mm-hmm. Tal <laughs> has for Nox, probably. <laughs> Nox, I think you know the answer to that. We never want trouble on ourselves. To that, it gets a bit more serious and says, Yeah, I know. Don't worry, there is no trouble here. You. Tal kind of is having difficulty formulating like some sentence or like where they're trying to get up. Are you doing something with this person to get information for us or are you. What's what's your connection with this person? Nox kind of like uh, expects Tal or anyone from the choir at some point to ask this question because obviously they are gonna. And I think he says, if I have any kind of business with Marshall, I think eventually it could probably be information for the choir, right? 
I mean, I'd only hope so, yeah. Yes. I'm uh, just doing my thing, you know? And it's not gonna affect the choir. You know me. On this but... note, I might be gone for a little while. I wanted to tell T myself, but... Oh, where are you off to? Adventure calls me. And he kind of looks at the distance just to nowhere, really. You're not leaving us, are you? What? I will never leave you. You need me. Come on. When Knox replies in that way, Tal bites on their tongue a bit, not meaning for the tone to come out the way they asked it. Didn't mean to sound like, oh, you can't go anywhere, you know, without us type of thing. Yeah, we'll always need you. I guess that's just why. Um, you know, there's sometimes I just do my thing, right? Yeah, we all do our thing. I just, I know we all don't really have the easiest job. Sometimes we might question why we're doing some of these things. You know, I, and then Talc doesn't really have a lot of these moments of admitting this, but tells Knox, regardless of the weird feeling that she feels about Knox right now, kind of says, I feel like we all question what we do sometimes, right? Why we're doing certain things, but at the end of it, I'm doing this for you guys, I'm doing this for tea. I mean, if I have to be honest, and it kind of shifts a bit the position. I have been questioning what I'm doing. That is true. But I've actually talked with T about it. And the person I care the most about is them. They know that. So whatever I do is not going to be troubling for them. Yeah, Noxie is being sincere right now. But I don't know if uh, Tal can recognize that. I think Tal wants to believe it, but is still cautious, you know, and then just takes in what they're saying. And then says, I know Knox, I know you. Which is why I just wanted to ask. Because to me, y'all come first. But I understand that we're all different people and we all have different thoughts. I'm not innocent of that. I mean, T comes first, but then, like, there is you guys. Maybe there is you. Maybe Dante is the last one, I suppose. It makes, like, a grimacing face, a fake one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. Tal doesn't know how to continue on this certain conversation. Like, I think she wants to find out more about Marshall, their relationship, but Nox seems like... He's on his own little merry way, but yeah, I mean, if you could just do us a favor, if you find anything out about Marshall that is beneficial for us or might get us out of harm, if you could just let me or Taya know, I'd mm -hmm. really appreciate it. Nox says, sure, if anything, it's actually dangerous for T. You'll know. Don't worry. And then Tal just nods and says, Okay, good. Also, no more get into fights with Dante, please. I mean, I'm literally leaving. Like, unless Dante follows me <laughs> to punch me again on the other eye. I Tal mean... raises their hands and is just like, I'm just saying, try right. not to hurt each other, all right? Yes, yes. No hurting, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, it's true. Okay. <laughs> and then he kind of like he gets serious. Uh, and then right. um, Tal is starting to like motion back towards the altar. Like, uh, seeing as the conversation's kind of ricocheting like in different directions, um, Tal is just like, a, um, all right, well, I'm going to head back. Towards, um, um, just one more thing. When you see T, let them know that I'll be gone for a little while. I thought you wanted to tell T yourself where you want me to tell them that. Kind of like it stops and looks towards the stables mm. and then looks at the altar and is like, I mean, you can talk to T. You love talking to T. You can do it. It's fine. I'll be back soon. Tal kind of just notes that and then um, as one small terse nod and then turns around and then starts walking towards the altar and then says without looking at Knox, have fun on your vacation. Thanks, I will. And he kind of just goes towards the stables. And I'll end <laughs> oh my god.
<laughs> scathing burn from town. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Have fun on your vacation. <laughs> Twist the knife. <laughs> um, okay, Nox, you make your way back to the stables. Tal, you head back to the altar, correct? Yes. Yes. All right. Nox, you walk over to the stables. Everyone is still getting ready. Haley is inspecting the saddle of <laughs> Deputy and furrowing her brow because something <laughs> seems wrong here. And she's taking her brush and brushing down the back like, this is strange. Morgan, Micah, Ash, all of you would see Nox approach. He's incredibly hard to miss. <laughs> and Haley sort of perks her ears up to the gravelly footsteps walking towards them. She spins and sees you. What exactly is your plan, Nox? There's two horses, there's four individuals in the coven. Haley walks over to you expectantly. Nox, when he actually realizes that there are two horses and four people, he's still approaching, but his pace slows down steadily, and then he just stops inspecting the area. And he looks at Haley and kind of motions her to come with a little like hand gesture but doesn't say anything (laughs) okay she does like a half jog over she looks at morgan before going to kind of share an understanding glance what does morgan look like in this moment morgan just has a really like Eyes glancing back at Haley, then back at Knox, then back at Haley, then back at Knox. <laughs> and just kind of like her eyebrows raised. And just like, oh my uh, god. Hey. <laughs> but she trusts in Haley, so she's gonna let Haley do whatever she needs to do. <laughs> I like to imagine that as Haley runs up, then the entire coven's kind of like watching. So Haley comes up and tips her hat at Knox <clears throat> in a greeting and, and smiles at him. Knox says, ma'am, and smiles a little bit. And then quickly looks back at the stable with everybody there <laughs> looking at them. And it's like, I didn't know that there was no space for me. Why did you invite me? We can make space. Or I didn't know whether or not you were coming. Do you need me to pick you up? I mean, you can't really make space for me. Like, those horses are going to die before they reach wherever they are going. You know, I have more horses, right? Are they hiding somewhere? He's like looking around, jokingly. Oh my god, it's extremely brazen of you to be making these jokes while we're just out in the open, colluding like this. Was your plan to come with me now? My plan was to check the place and check if I could come, but I guess I can't. But also, I actually have to pack my things still. I can't just be wearing this shirt and these sunglasses all the time, right? So I guess I kind of wanted to just check the place, say hi again. And he gives a little smile, looking at Haley. All right, well, gotta be honest, I wasn't entirely sure if you were coming. I mean, I told the others, but no sure thing. Oh, damn. Are you regretting asking me to come on a little adventure and he makes hand quotes? She smiles in like a big way, sort of sharp tooth smile, like, oh my goodness, no. Pleasantly surprised, that's all. All right. Well, I sort of forgot to mention this. And she reaches behind her into her back pockets of the chaps and she pulls out a blindfold. And she says... Regardless of how you're getting there, you are not seeing the way we go until we know that we can trust you. So I know you got those big, beautiful eyes, but you're not going to be seeing much anyways. Damn. Am I? Oh, my. (laughs) And he raises his eyebrows looking at the blindfold. (laughs) And it's like, you know what? Sure, that's fine. But... Mm. Okay. I I just want to make it clear. I do want to follow that lead that you told me about. Well, pretty boy, we make deals. We're not charities. You help me with something and I'll help you find what you need. I thought I was already helping you with lots of things. 
and it's gonna rock for us. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> god damn it! Not in front of my salad, my oh. whole cover. <laughs> no, no! Oh my god! I guess okay. I have work experience. Yeah, well, good for you. I think that when he says that Haley flushes bright red <laughs> and gets embarrassed in like a non-flirty way, very sort of like, please don't do this in front of all my friends. I swear to God, <laughs> her ears turn red. She's like, this can't be happening. <laughs> and she's going to put both hands on his midsection and push him further away from earshot of the stables. <laughs> you will not do this here right now, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone heard all of that, of course. Like... <laughs> Can I just say something to Morgan as Haley's just talking to us? <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, I think Ash approaches Morgan, looks how they're not very, like, approving of the two of them together. And I want to say something Morgan. I think Morgan's face right now is not disapproving, but I think it's almost, like, shock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I say something and tempt the arm? Oh, Jesus oh my Christ. god. <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. are you, wait, are you going to use a string on the arm? Ye yeah. Everyone's okay. got a string on that goddamn arm. <laughs> <laughs> Ash just approaches them from behind and says to Morgan, you should watch out for all the choir members. If you can get something from him, you should. Oh, okay. Miss God, what happens? Okay, so, Ash, you said you should try to get information from the choir members? More like because I saw what Morgan did already, like getting Tao's wallet. So I'm saying like maybe they can get something from Knox. Ooh, okay, yeah. So, so um, I want to tempt them to steal to something pickpocket. from Knox. Yeah. Nice. Okay, yeah. Very, very, very good. So, Morgan, what do you say to that? Your arm has now been tempted. It's been enchanted. So, at some point, you will steal from Nox. I think she, she's going to eye Ash suspiciously. Like, she hasn't seen this side of Ash yet. And then she'll grin at Ash and say, Way ahead of you on that one. Ash just kind of nods and smiles at Morgan. At least on that front, they do have an understanding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. So Haley has pushed Nox around the corner of where the stables are. So they're slightly out of eyesight as well. And she <laughs> takes her hat off and like runs a hand through her hair and puts the hat back on like she's sweating. She's just like, all right, well, if you're all right with all this and you, you need to pack, do you need me to come back here and then we'll do this thing? He's very amused, actually. <laughs> he's happy, to, like, he, he flustered that. Um, he says, yeah, you can pick me up later. I mean, I cannot pick you up. I'm too small, but oh I will God. come around with the horses. <laughs> and I thought I was the bad one of flirting, anyway. Uh, Haley's going to turn around and go back to the coven and... See you, show... Marshall! <laughs> Before she sort of lets them go, let's see. <laughs> oh, 14! <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Kind of cataclysmic, absolutely oh nuclear roll. <laughs> Holy and shit, she, what was that? <laughs> Haley, just as Nox is leaving, she's gonna give him like a sly grin and be like, and I mean, I guess, I guess you do help me out every once in a while and give him a little <laughs> wink and then walk back to the coven. Oh, <laughs> okay. I think the Nox is actually, you know what? Since he was so fucking high, he's actually flustered at that. So he raises his <laughs> eyebrows and he goes to say something about it, opens his mouth, but then he doesn't say anything and he skips a bit and he says, All right. And he just turns around <laughs> and he heads <laughs> towards the altar. <laughs> he tried so hard to <laughs> fluster Haley. <Hayley. laughs> 14 is the best one you could get, holy shit. Okay, so Haley also gets a knock string 
awesome. Nux heads back into the altar. Um, Dante, you walk back into the altar, and you notice that Taya is ahead of you. I'd like you to make a dark roll for me. Okay. Okay, so that was a fail. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have you mark sanity damage right now. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> okay. So... When you enter the altar, there is a group of people sitting at the bar, and they turn to face you, and they are faceless. Their skin is pale, their hair is long and dark, their clothing is nondescript, but black and potentially lacy in parts you you can't really see uh, what's going on. But you notice that all of them have stopped and they've all turned their faceless, vacant skulls towards you and they're looking at you. And you'll notice that Cam beside you has visibly prickled. She doesn't look like she's well. She's got her haunches raised a bit. And you begin to feel a low vibrational hum coming from beneath the altar. And there's a quiet whisper that just permeates the air that says tombs look in the tunnels Dante turns to Cam to see if she's seeing what they're seeing they kind of say um do you know these guys Cam grumbles and shakes her head and is like no what's in the tombs They say and turn to the figures. All of them, at the same time, stand up and begin to walk towards the door that has been welded shut by Tao that leads down. All in unison, you watch them all vanish behind the bar. What do you do? Can Dante follow them? Yeah, you can follow them. When you round the corner in the bar, you begin to see that there are cups laden around on tables, on the surface of the bar. They're stained with this dark brownish red liquid. Cam begins to smell kind of erratically. She's sniffing her nose and looking around and you can tell something about her is really off. And as you round the corner, in almost a processional line with a space for you in the middle, all of the figures are standing, turned towards you, and the door that once was welded shut is now completely open. Dante looks at Cam real quick and then decides to follow. As you walk down, it's dark. There's no light, and the only thing around you at this point is Cam's glowing yellow eyes. Do you want to pull out a lighter? Yes. As you flick the lighter on, you begin to walk through the tunnels. None of the figures follow you, actually. You're just by yourself, and you notice that there are these dark, wet-looking patches on the ground, but since the ground is so dark, You can't really tell what they are. Do you want to investigate them at all? Yeah, Dante's gonna ask Cam if it's blood. (laughs) Cam is gonna dip all four fingers into it, pull their hand out, and when she sees what it is, just like stick two fingers in her mouth to taste it and be like, (laughs) yeah. Okay. That doesn't face Dante because they're used to (laughs) shenanigans. Um, They're like, oh, that's just Cam. <laughs> yeah, good old Cam. They they continue, they follow the tunnel. As you sort of walk through the labyrinth, uh, you have a general understanding of how it works. You've been here many times before, but as it is with every member of the choir, you map out specific parts, but you have no concept of how deep the tunnels run, how far down they go. And as you near what seems to be an exit that leads towards the canyon, you hear thunder rumble outside. But the sky is totally bright. What are you thinking? Does Dante know about Taya's condition? Yeah. And it's not necessarily a condition. 
in many ways, people kind of worship Teo for what they can do. Can I roll dark? Yeah, what would you like to ask the abyss? If Dante follows the sound of the thunder, find its source, origin, would it be T that was doing that? All right, roll. Okay, right. so an eight is a mixed success, so the abyss shows you confusing visions, but you get your answer nonetheless. And uh, around you, you can feel the tunnel walls quiver with the sound of more thunder. And as you look outside, in a blink, it's almost as though you didn't see it at all. A flash of lightning streaks across a completely clear sky, like a warning. And then you can feel there's a presence behind you somewhere, and you know it must be T. What do you oh do? Oh boy, um, you know what? Dante will continue on their way. Oh my god, yes you will. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dante, as you press forward, you're greeted with a crossroads. Do you want to go to the left or the right? Are they both looking same? Or... One of them looks like it might have some kind of light down further, and one of them looks a little bit suspiciously dark. Is it is it that thing in the movies they do? The light one is actually full of horrors and the dark <laughs> is fine? <laughs> I mean, do you trust me? Like, I guess you'll just have to uh, roll the dice. Yeah. Can I... You know what? I'm gonna roll chance. And Ooh. if I succeed, I will take the route that it's more beneficial to Dante. Okay, yeah. If that you're gonna sense. you're using chance to basically listen to your intuition and then pick the right path. Yes. All right, real chance. Okay, so a seven is a mixed success, so you do succeed in your gamble, but something is lost along the way. Something, either your steadiness, or perhaps something falls out of your pocket. Maybe you make a clumsy mistake. I'm gonna say that when you were inspecting the blood with Cam, you stepped in some. And so you do have footprints that mm. are going to give away your location. But you do pick the better route for you, Dante. Okay. And it leads you to an elevator shaft. Haha, uh -huh. Dante will go in. Okay. You hit the button that makes the elevator whir. The cage cracks and shakes. And then you're able to pull the sheet across where the sort of chain link has fused itself so that you can step inside. And the elevator finally reaches you. Do you want to get in? Can the elevator go down, or does it just go up? Am I at the lowest? Oh, the level? elevator only goes down. Ah, okay, yeah, I go in. Okay, Cam is trembling like a dog who looks a little bit afraid. Do you want Cam to come with you, or do you want to leave Cam behind? Dante will motion uh, with their head for Cam to join them, but I think Cam can tell that it's not like an order. If she doesn't want to come, she can stay there. Cam will still assume that means that Dante wants her to go with them, so she will get in the elevator. Now, the elevator has only one button. You want to make the final call to go down? Hell yeah. Okay. The gates close. You can hear more thunder, more lightning, almost as though the storm is directly above you, but there's nothing to be seen, there's nothing to be found. The elevator shakes and creaks and descends for what feels like five full minutes, just burrowing itself deep into the side of this canyon. And eventually, the doors open and you're met with an extreme darkness. Darkness like you've never known before. Do you want to reach in and get your lighter? Yeah. They, they wait for a moment because they're not ready. They don't know what to expect to see, but they go for it and light it up. What you're greeted with is 
these two iron heavy triangular doors carved into the rock itself and there's a giant red sigil painted on the outside and the ground is completely wet and your light it only extends so far so you can't even see how big this room is but you know that those doors lead somewhere what do you want to do without turning to cam dante says quietly is this place familiar to you you know it is do you want to go back up? <laughs> no. I'm not scared. Are you sure? Yeah. Shut up. Dante will head towards the gate. Can you make another dark roll for me? It's a, it's a six. Okay. You have to take one more sanity damage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm going to say that as you walk towards this door, something feels really wrong and you know it's wrong. You've been compelled to be here. You can't even explain it in yourself. Why did you come here? And I'm going to do something. Okay. There's a shadow around you. You don't know where they are. You can't even tell completely if it's a person or just some sort of specter that's haunting you. And as you feel this entire sort of chasm get colder and colder, Cam beside you in an act of what can only be described as childlike terror transforms back into being a dog. It kind of circles you with the hopes that maybe <laughs> If she's smaller, no one can see her. You feel a ghostly hand wrap around your throat. And for just what seems like a split second, you feel like you can parse out two very dark eyes in the door where a person should be. And that's where we're gonna end the session. Uh -oh! <laughs> So evil. Wow. We went from rom-com to this. <laughs> we, went, we, went, we went from like slice of life to rom-com to hell. Oh, oh my god. No. Don't forget what this game is, you <laughs> so Oh my god. And, and say, say bye to the recording. Bye, bye recording. Bye. 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 <laughs>